Hey, hi everyone. Welcome back. Uh, today we are going to discuss about test ng important interview questions. So if you have no idea about test ng or you know if you want to know like practically with each example how it works, I have created one playlist with all test ng topics. So if you have good time before interview, just go and check all the videos. So if you have interview in the next moment, don't worry. We'll deal with each of the questions, most frequently asked questions along with real time examples. So let's get started. Uh, first one, how to set priority to test in test ng? Uh, very important question. Okay, so prior setting priority in the sense like if you have 10 test cases, how, what would, how would you as a QA engineer prioritize them? So there is a way you syntactically like you know how you prioritize. So at the rate test is nothing but you are telling that it is your test case and at that level whenever you write at the rate test you have to include priority number also. Zero being the highest uh, priority like you know taking the highest precedence over everything 0, 1, 2, 3. So that order you have to define at the test case level at that at the rate test annotation. So I have given a short snippet uh, here. So I have two tests here if you check uh, at the rate test and uh, test case 1 and test case 2. And my test is starting with at the rate test annotation where for the first test case I set my priority as 1 and for the second test case if you see I gave priority equal to 0. So when I run this program first uh, uh, the output will be like this like test case 2 will be executed first and test case 1 will be executed next. That's because uh, how I have set the priority. So in this way if you have large number of test cases right you can have your own you know order of precedence how like how you want them to be executed so syntax also they might ask you so just tell that you always include it at the rate test and at the test case level so whenever you write at the rate test you set the priority why you are doing that because you can tell that you know in my application like there are number of test cases so the precedence order you know as a QA engineer I know like what test needs more uh, uh, like what needs what test needs to be run you know in what order so I set priority to my test cases and coming to the next question what are groups in test ng so if you think like you know manually also when we are uh, when like long back if somebody have m m worked in manual testing you have like regression uh, you know test cases excel sheet smoke test case excel sheet so we just group and write all test cases in one sheet so the same concept okay this test ng is actually a blessing to QA engineers I can say every concept like you know everything is so easy and so very easy to maintain. So grouping what happens is like you know today you are writing 10 test cases and uh, in test ng. So you feel that you know 3 out of those 10 come under regression. So every time you want to run your regression you want them to be executed. So you can name them and add them to a group called regression. So this is the syntax in the first line. Again this is at the test case level. So at the rate test followed by group name. When you say groups is equal to regression. So the way you run them is from XML file. So in the XML file you will have an option to run at group level. So whenever you select group name is regression all the regression test cases no matter in how many classes they are they all will be run in one at one step. So the same way you can have smoke suite also or uh, if you are uh, comfortable grouping your test cases based on the functionality right you can say all the login functionalities will come under group name as login so whenever you want to perform a regression in that particular module you will just kick off that particular regroup from your xml file so this is the beauty of grouping so just tell them with the real time scenario that you know yeah i have like you know in my company i have uh, um, a number of groups so usually the regression group is what we run and the smoke group is also there so based on sometimes functionality wise also will create groups so the advantage of grouping is you know doesn't matter how many classes you have your test cases are all can be grouped and run it in one step with the help of your xml file so that's the answer and coming to your annotations uh, yeah all the time we have been seeing at the rate test right so what does it mean at the rate test is the annotation there at the rate whatever you write at the rate and followed by a test or before test these are all called annotations they always start with this at the rate so they will tell the program like what they are doing so for example if you say at the rate test right it means that anything next to line from that particular uh, at the rate test is your test case so it is the language that we have to follow for the test ng programs to run. So in the same way we have number of annotations uh, like before test, after test, after class etc. 
now practically like you know if interviewer is asking you like how how did you use it like you know uh, what are the most frequently used annotations you can say that you know yeah i've used before test after test uh, and uh, before sweet after sweet etc now he, if he goes like you know beyond that question and asks you like why did you use them you can always say that you know yeah i have some uh, particular set of code that needs to be executed before every test in the same way i have a uh, you know particular conditions to be executed after every test case so that's what i include like examples the best example i can tell you is uh, you know um, clearing cache so for example before your test cases you know start running you want to make sure that all the you know cache is clear and you know so you can write that particular snippet of code in the before test in the same way after class after all your test cases are executed maybe you want to close all the browsers so you will write after you know after test uh, annotation there so this is the way you communicate and you know make your things work in a better way so this is a beautiful concept annotations so make like related with practical examples like you know what part of your particular projects uh, you know code you want to execute before your test case and what is that you want to execute after before suite takes the highest priority so before like you know regression starts if you want something to be executed include that in the before suite test case so this is how you know you have to explain and coming to the next one re, uh, include and exclude methods in test engine so when you are running your test cases right sometimes it so happens that uh, for example you have 50 test cases in a class now out of 50 there are four to five five test cases where you know you know that there is a that you do, you don't want them to be executed at that particular time okay the, for whatever reason maybe you you do, that's not in scope for that release etc so based on that you know you have an ability to actually add these names like you know what you want to include and what you don't want to include so you have two special you know tags include name and exclude name based on this you can include what methods exactly you want to actually you know execute and uh, for example out of 50 you don't want to in that case you just ex exclude those two right and uh, maybe if you out of 50 you just want two in that case you will include based on how your need is you can make those programs run and now these methods in test ng are nothing but test cases right so you'll just add these methods to run this i have a very good video on in the test ng playlist for include and exclude methods so if you want you know practical examples so just go and check that out but again like you know this is like very simple you have to make sure that you relate it with your real time so you can tell that you know for one release right out of uh, 500 test cases that we had to run 125 were out of scope for that particular release so we have like a very big regression suite out of which 125 we just excluded and ran everything so this is how like you have to come up with real time scenarios and uh, what is the xml config in test ng so this is like a very good blessing to us because xml config will allow you to run like you know multiple test cases in one step so it's a it's a configuration that you have to do in test ng so what you have to do is you can tell what exactly you want to run and based in one step you can run all the test cases from multiple classes at a time now it's a and it also has like you know package level execution where you know you can group a certain number of test cases at one level called one package and you know just run that package itself group level execution you have so it's a very good concept now if you if they ask you like you know what, when did you use you can tell that you know in my project we always kick off like you know if you want to if we want to check some code locally what we do is we go to xml level configuration we have for regression suite smoke suite and you know some basic functionalities so we all group them so i always make sure that i'll kick them off from my xml config and see whether they are running or not how the report looks before we integrate them to git so in the same way xml also provides an ability to pass parameters so we'll talk about it in the next uh, i think i included that as one of the questions so if you know if they ask you about the what xml config is tell all these points if they go beyond that parameters and all like we will you have to explain what we are talking in the next uh, answer uh, like uh, next question so what is parameterization so parameterization see not all the times we have to hard code our, all the you know usernames and passwords in our programs that's no good way to program 
so what happens is in this xml level you will you will have an ability to parameterize so in this case if you see the syntax right parameter name is equal to username so i'm telling that whenever my in my program i only say username it will come to the xml and check the value which is supriya okay in the same way password if you have some password you will just define it in the xml file so in the program you will know where mention what it is so you should not expose the usernames and passwords right in the same way if some parameter like your browser name is repeatedly being used you can always parameterize and use that variable wherever you want in whatever test case you want so this is the way how you parameterize you give like it's a key value pair key is a username value is what you your username is same way password and you you give your password this is all being set up in the xml file now uh, real time say so when did you use it so you can say that you know maybe if you have a database right i don't want to you know expose all my database usernames and passwords port numbers etc uh, in my code so i'll just parameterize them in the xml and use uh, there are number of uh, places where i use my database credentials so i you i just call these parameters and use it and uh, real time uh, this is what you can tell and it allows us to parameterize test from xml file as we already discussed we can use it in our test cases like uh, you have this parameters annotation so you uh, here you have to keep in mind two things you should know how to add these parameters in the xml file the first two lines you should say key value pair with the help of that you will add parameters and for you to use these parameters in your test case you have this at the rate parameters annotation so once you start your test right at the rate test you have to say that what parameters you want to use from your xml so you should be clear with these annotations here so data provider so this is a method which there is a method which is annotated with at the rate data provider so a detailed uh, you know example i have uh, given in the data provider uh, test ng classes so if you have time go and check that but what it does is it will help you to parameter uh, pass parameters to your test so for example in one class i have 50 test cases okay in 50 test cases i have a single parameter that has to be used repeatedly or a group of parameters right i define that in a method and i call in all my 50 as as and how i want so it's a very good feature it, it lot of rework will be you know reduced and it's very very beautiful mechanism where you can pass parameters to all your tests so all the test cases in that class they can use the data provider set that we have used or declared in that particular class so you can elaborate this and if, if they ask you to write pseudo code for this don't worry just uh, you know there are a number of uh, online tutorials available so just see how you have to define a data provider how you have to use that in one test so if you use that if you understand the concept of using a data provider in one test case it can be used in multiple test cases so you can elaborate that and you know tell tell to the interviewer now one other most commonly asked question is dependency what is dependency in tests so if you think like you know without uh, starting this let us think in real time right uh, you have lot of dependency for example if you take facebook right if you want to check the news feed okay functionality first you have to log in right so in this case news feed or notifications whatever notifications have dependency on your login test case so the same way in your application also you might have number of dependencies if you just think of it so all these dependencies you can set with the help of at the depends on methods okay there is at the at the rate test like wherever you are defining your test add this dependence on met depends on methods and give the me test case numbers which you know you think that they are depending on so in this case first line if you see right you are starting a test case and you are telling that this test case that i'm going to start should depend on test case 3 now until test case 3 is executed this this test will not start that is how you are adding dependency so maybe some jobs have to be run for your test case to start so like that kind of dependencies you can tell like in real time scenarios so there is also one more uh, method called depends on groups so you can say like you know until my login group of test cases is run don't start another group so something like that so it's very very important concept now the next question is explain your framework so first thing you know if you're projecting automation experience you cannot you know uh, avoid test ng questions they have they will definitely target test ng because that's a very widely used and very best framework as of what i i know so 
when they ask you about the entire framework structure just talk like you know how your structure is like how you have for your test cases defined what package is like you know on a high level nobody will ask like you know business wise what is the name of your particular functionality etc just on a high level tell them that you know i structure my test cases like this i have a b c d packages and uh, next like you know how you configured your xml when do you kick off test cases from your xml so how the maven project was built and uh, how are you driving your parameters these are all like you know the interviewer will be interested in so for example module a like you know in your if you are working in mod um, banking application they will not ask you about credit or debit nothing no no domain specific questions usually framework or automation questions the interviewer will try to see or gauge like you know how you actually on a high level understood the concept and how you implemented it so just you know uh, tell him the entire outer line of what you do so how you are driving parameters and you know how you are managing your repository if it is a git how are you you know uh, pushing all your test changes to your git and how your continuous integration work or works in your particular project and um, mostly like they might ask you how you have scheduled your jenkins jobs what is the mode of communication like you know how do you share reports with your team like you know you you have automated everything you know that your scripts are running but are they going to the broader teams so you have to explain all these things and how do you handle script failures if you see some failures like what are your the steps that you follow and uh, of course uh, you know we know that scripts need continuous maintenance so what are the steps that you are taking uh, to maintain these scripts so just like you know have clear thought of what you are talking like step by step and give him an overview every question of you will be like you know uh, uh, for he will be like he will be it's it's like uh, sorry so every answer that you say that will lead to one of the question that he is going to ask so it's it should be kind of like you know what my suggestion is if you have clear understanding of any topic only then you know take out that name or use the technical term because uh, you, that should not prone the interviewer to you know divert you to some other question which you really have no idea about so always like you should drive the interview it, it should be that way not like you know you take him in the right direction with all the words that you have used and you are confident on so that he can ask you more questions on that topic that's um, that's my only suggestion and uh, last Uh, but not the least what is test ng and why test ng so we i listed this at the end because we, we so far we have uh, seen each and every beauty of uh, test ng concepts right so you put all of them together so it has excellent annotations reporting is the very best feature of test ng so it generates excellent reports where you can share with all the broader team members and the grouping is again an excellent feature you can have a suite level and package level execution from xmls you can configure all the groups in the xmls and you know parameterization is possible you can add dependencies to your test cases so just you know put all the things together you can prioritize your test cases so 1 to 9 whatever did we discussed right all the questions just all the answers put together is your question number 10 answer to your question number 10 so talk more and you know like test ng is very very beautiful concept as i've been telling so if you want the very detailed you know explanation go and check my playlist of all the test ng concepts where i have started from how to install it from starting from there to adding like you know xml configurations and entire tutorial there is also one topic called listeners where we can implement listeners in this framework so though it is not very widely asked but you know i have heard one or two questions about it as well so if you have time before your interview i would say like you know just check how the listeners interface we can implement and you know how we can make use of that concept in test ng so these are the basic 10 questions that i thought like most commonly used and after talking to my friends also this is what i have been told that you know very widely asked questions if you have any new questions that are coming up you know just take a moment and you know just put them under the comment section it might help me or it might help anyone who is actually eagerly waiting for a job and getting like you know having an interview in a day or two um, enjoy your testing guys um, good luck with everything and uh, happy testing talk to you in the next video until then bye bye